Okay, come on now. Let's use this sword to, to its best effect. Ah. Oh, I took so much damage. Wow. Okay. And I got... <laughs> well, that's hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. Did you see that? I literally got hit in the face with a javelin. Gain some good polearm... Really? <laughs> okay. That was kind of weird. Anyway, gain some good polearm skill, or at least I will try to. Hello and welcome back to the Ronin, and we are here in the smithy in one of the Tetsujin towns. As I wanted to do a little bit of smithy leveling, I've obviously been here for quite a while. Now, I didn't have a huge amount of hardwood, but this is actually something that uh, some of you may not already know about. I found this out in the Batanian Smith series. There's a playlist down below if you want to check it out otherwise. But basically, what you can do is if you don't necessarily have a good way to acquire hardwood to be able to make charcoal, then you have a really good way to do this. Basically, if you buy a very small amount of hardwood, so let's say five or six, I don't know, just a, a small amount, and then you just smelt that, or refine that, shall we say, into charcoal, then you can use that with a bunch of wooden maces. Like, wooden maces and pitchforks are extremely cheap to buy en masse. So even if you can't find an extremely lucrative supply of hardwood, you can smelt these things down. You can smelt the wooden wooden maces or wooden hammers or whatever they're called and the pitchforks for three hardwood per one. So in other words, you're trading one charcoal for three hardwood. And then obviously if you have this particular refinement method, you know, two hardwood, and then that goes into three charcoal, you're going to be swimming in charcoal in no time at all. And that's exactly what I um, actually ha happened to do. I actually managed to do that because I did have a couple of pitchforks and some wooden hammers uh, just from fighting bandits. So that's obviously also a, a way that you can acquire hardwood without really having to spend any money whatsoever. So it's really pretty good. Anyway, as you can no doubt tell, I have pretty much smelted every single weapon here that has... Uh, given me new parts and I've taken a look through the blades selection and let me just say the blade selection is not that good unfortunately at the moment it doesn't seem that good at least I mean you can see here that um, this this looks pretty cool but it's not a katana and I'm really wanting to use a katana of some kind or at the very least some kind of curved blade and this isn't I mean it's a little bit curved but not that much so it's not really um not really working out too well this would be very cool but obviously it is um it's still not a katana in in many many different respects I don't think there is actually a katana available in the crafting menu so it's highly unlikely we'll be able to even get one which is sad in my opinion because i would love to be able to utilize one if at all possible no no it doesn't seem like it as you can see there's there's basically nothing here so i will basically have to make do with either a random weapon from some marketplace somewhere or another or i will maybe make something like um i don't know probably one of these i personally feel like this looks really cool I, I like the stats on it too and you can probably make something really really good out of the parts as well look at that that looks it looks like a pirate's cutlass doesn't it okay yeah it's a bit too much like a pirate's cutlass perhaps but still it's uh it's available and there's a there's a grip there as well that's actually a pretty um isn't that a rare grip i, I don't think i've ever seen that before but that's a, that's kind of interesting okay so but yeah i would like to get a one-handed slash two-handed sword um sort of variant going on here but i don't think i can even do that with this current blade so uh, i think the grip also makes a difference on that but yeah there's a whole bunch of different things that we would be able to craft here i can actually craft this right now if i had the blade so i'm going to select let me actually just see here um should i just make this and see how it goes maybe uh i mean the the difficulty you see the, the difficulty is the main problem here okay so i'm thinking we'll probably use the long saber blade because i actually really like the long saber blade quite a bit and then we'll see what happens. Um, I think this is the highest. Yeah, that is indeed the highest guard that I have. And this is the highest grip. 
and we ah oh, okay we need a different pommel uh, i don't i don't have very high high level pommels here but look at the difficulty of this thing this is absolutely insane right so we're just going to make everything really really large and maybe the blade could use a little bit less but i'm thinking what's the swing speed like uh i think 82 swing speed's pretty nice i quite like around that number so i'm pretty happy to go for this and let's try it out okay so how much do you think we're going to get in terms of smithing skill? Because at the moment, it doesn't seem like we gained anything. But let's have a look. I actually have no idea what to call this either. Because let's face it, it's probably not going to be the most, um, shall we say, most proficient weapon for us. So, um, could uh, I'm going to say it could be better. Could be better. There we go. And we gained seven skill points in smithing from that. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. So that's pretty good. Now... What if I actually made something a little bit, a little bit more, eh? A little bit more. So let's just, let's just try this out. All right. Oh, swing speed stays the same, but it's 75 swing speed, so that's pretty harsh. Um, we're gonna go for mm, uh, slower than a snail because it's 75 swing speed that's that's pretty slow and we gain another seven skill points in smithing that was the whole reason why i even wanted to put points in smithing to begin with those focus points have come in mighty handy because gaining this experience i could craft another technically i could craft another two weapons and then i'd level up you see so it's very, very lucrative to do things like that. Anyway, we're not going to be doing Curious Smelter. We'll just do Steelmaker once again. And I'm going to try to aim to get about 150. And maybe if I can, I'd like to get to 225 smithing. But we're going to need many more focus points for that. Anyway, this is where I currently am. Of course, we are still at war against the Azurai, and my army is significantly bigger than it was before, because obviously I've just been running around and recruiting troops. I got all these guys from here, and um, they've been leveling up by me fighting a bunch of bandits and Tetsujin vagrants and so on. So that's go that's been going quite quite well, actually. Quite, quite well. Not too bad. And we're also just going to be getting some more food. We have 25 days worth of food because obviously Bannerlord Tweaks gives you the day count rather than the actual consumable item number, which is great. That's much, much more useful in my opinion. But now we're going to be heading onward. We're going to be heading into Azurai territory. And I would like to be able to do some damage to some of them if at all possible. So... I'm hopeful that I might be able to come across some. Hubyar has been taken even. Wow. That is actually insane. Wait a minute. What did I actually just gain here? Steward skill? Or is it scouting? Or Yeah. Steward skill. Look at that. Steward skill just literally gave me... Uh, over 9,000 experience just because I have multiple different kinds of food in my inventory right now. So that's actually kind of amazing. We're going to be leveling up our polearm skill once again, but, and we're going to go for another point in vigor. It's about time that we actually level that up some more. Maybe I should have gone for some more charm. No, we've still got some good learning rate on the charm, so it shouldn't be too bad. And what's currently going on here? Yeah, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't attack any towns just yet. Ooh, this guy might actually... Mmm, yes. I think we will probably be attacking him relatively soon. I just want to take a look at this guy and his stats. Right, okay, the stats are not too good for him, so we should have a pretty easy time of things. I have 58 influence. Unfortunately, I'm still not able to use the 60 influence option, but I probably doubt I would be able to get anything from that. But we're going to be getting 8,000 charm experience, and that's going to give us 12 skill points in charm which is always good very nice indeed so we're now going to be oh helping this caravan apparently wow it's a double whammy by the looks of things that's really nice because i was actually kind of a bit um i wasn't a bit i, I guess i was a bit worried but i wasn't thinking that we would be so even in terms of combat strength that just shows how powerful this guy actually is because even though his main army composition is mostly those veteran cavalry, which I personally do not really count as being that good. But even though he has mostly those, apparently some of the other units in his army are helping his combat strength to be pushed a little bit further in our direction. So I'm going to try for a couple of couch lances here. Ah, yes, apparently not. 
Apparently not. You know what? Maybe I should just... Yeah, maybe I should try that. You know? A little bit of stabby stabby never hurt anyone. Well, you know, except the obvious. But, uh, yeah. I'm thinking that we're probably going to do something like that instead of um, what we would normally do. Which is uh, Couch Lance. Although Couch Lancing, I think, is pretty good against uh, archers and things like that. I think poking against cavalry is definitely going to be much, much better. Unless they are stationary like this. And if I could be a little bit more accurate, please. Uh, yes, could I be more accurate? I don't know. Yes, apparently I could. There we go. A thousand polearm experience for taking care of that guy. This guy's going to absolutely murder me if I allow him to. As you can see right there, that was almost an insta-kill. There we go. Oh, that was an insta kill if ever I saw one. Yes, I like it. Uh, nice little 43 damage right there. And we pushed him off his mount thanks to our skill right there as well. And who's this? Who are these people back here? Oh, that's the caravan. All right. <laughs> that's actually the caravan. That's, that's very amusing. All right. Well, whatever the case, we are more than happy to achieve this victory. This is going to give us so much experience. I hope that not many of our people have been taken care of. Oh, I, I did actually kill the horse there. Didn't really want to kill the horse. If I'm honest, I would have much preferred to take out the rider. Ah, couldn't get him, couldn't get him. All right, I think I'm going to need to get a new pole arm of some kind. I think I'm going to need a longer reaching one because as it stands right now, it's a bit difficult to use as it is. I, I feel like this is quite large though. It feels quite long, but apparently it's not enough to give me the uh, the same kind of reach that I would otherwise want. Okay, come on. Get him. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Oh, massive experience gain. Massive experience gain from these kills right here. Okay, and I believe that is indeed it. So how many did we actually lose? Okay, so we lost some trained footmen, we lost some recruits, and we lost some footmen. Oh, all right, that's actually not even that bad. I think that generally, anytime you lose anything below tier three, that's perfectly fine. I don't think that there's any problem with that whatsoever because most of the people that end up surviving... And look at the renown! Look at this! Ah, oh, crazy amounts of renown right there. 47 influence. Wow, that's pretty cool. Alright, so we're just going to let him go because that's what we do because he's obviously a major vassal in the minor faction that he's a part of. And 8,000 charm! 8,000 charm, and we've uh, also gained some charm skill points, up to 70 now we have it. And we're going to be rescuing, should we rescue all these guys? I mean, they generally will level up into forest bandits, but I don't have veterans respect or anything like that, so it's probably not going to make that much difference if I take them or not. I guess I will take them for now. Don't really want to continue using them. And that actually brings me to the next point. I actually have those Kuz-8 units in my army still, and I need to get rid of them, actually. So we're going to do that right now, because, as I said before, I really do not want to use any other units. And, you know, that actually... I'm, I'm going to get rid of all of them, actually. Um, now that I think about it, I really should not deviate from the theming that I really wanted to have for this series, because I feel like it's it's quite important to maintain that and... While I might end up using some things that are not necessarily, you know, appropriate to the theme, like a, a certain uh, pair of boots, for example, because let's face it, a pair of boots, I mean, it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter whether a pair of boots is from somewhere else, you know, apart from the Tetsujin. But if I look considerably different than right now, like, for example, if I didn't have this helm on and I didn't have this armor on, and I had, you know, like an imperial helm or something like that, that would just look odd and super weird in my opinion. So it's um, it's a bit of a, shall we say, discretion thing. So we're just going to kind of continue with that and see what happens. But otherwise, I'm going to go into the trade screen here because I would like to potentially purchase some more... Um, more horses. Oh, these guys. Eh, I guess I'll purchase some more of these. And we want to get some more food. Wow, these, these towns are literally... I, I don't even know. They're br f full to the brim. Full to the brim. Full of food and supplies and all kinds of crazy stuff. I have no idea how that's even possible, but apparently it is. Anyway, um, I'm actually thinking that we will maybe want to go into a tournament, but I'm currently doing okay on money. And I don't really like going into tournaments that much, as I've said. I think that that's a bit too much. 
Let's wear these shoulders. Hmm. That's a little bit uh, a little bit touch and go right there. Oh, this is a nice set of armor, but this is Eastern, right? Eastern plated leather vest. Is that a Kuzate item? That indeed might be a coup. No, no, no. This is also Eastern. Ah, okay. There we go. So it's actually... Mm, cool. All right. That actually looks pretty nice. And do we have any better boots or anything like that? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right. So that is absolutely fine. Then I think we can now continue onward. Yes, indeed. All right. So I'm just going to sell that for 11,000. And look at that. Step recurve bow. Thank you very much. Going to give this to this fellow. He's definitely going to... Wait a minute. Was he already... He was already using that. He was already using that. I can't believe it. Okay. Well, no one else is going to use it. And yes, indeed. Ica did actually die in the previous episode. <sighs> R.I.P. in peace. Exactly. Anyway, I'm just going to sell the remaining bow then because 21,000 now we're going to be gaining from just selling some random loot, which is always nice. And um, yeah, now uh, we should probably just make sure everyone's leveled up. Yep, everyone has leveled up very nicely. And we've also leveled up as well, have we? Yes, in charm skill, indeed we have. 20% more renown from battles is always what I'm going to be taking. Adventure stories, if you're focusing on doing quests and tasks and all that stuff then I suppose that is good because I think that that's what that means. Plus one renown for each issue resolved. So I would assume that that's what they mean. They mean issue as in quest or task. But for me specifically, 20% more renown is just much better. It's going to give you so much bonus from pretty much any large scale battle. And I'm sorry, Karith, but I will have to fight you right now. <laughs> I was actually thinking that I would be attacked relatively soon because we we really like Karath, or at least I really like Karath. Every single time I have encountered him in previous series, if I've gotten him to join our faction for any particular reason, he's always been fantastic. He's been an absolutely uh, loyal to the end kind of guy. Although he did leave that one time, but that was only because there was basically no one else in the faction. He, he stayed for at least, I don't even know, one in-game month longer than pretty much anyone else, which was super, super impressive to me. So that's the reason why I like him quite a bit. He was staying with us when we were outnumbered, outgunned, and we were trying our hardest to maintain our foothold. And, well, it was pretty harsh. It's pretty harsh. Anyway, I think that was actually in, um, where, where was that again? Wasn't that in the Kuzade Carnate series? I think that might have been in the Kuzay Carnate series, or it might, it might have been in something else, but whatever the case, I feel like he's a pretty cool guy, um, but I have heard some things about him. Some people have, have said to me that he's um, kind of a backstabber in other, in other series, so it could just be that, um, you know, he, his uh, personality randomizes a little bit, you know, that could actually be how it is, unfortunately. Anyway, we're going to go and make these guys go into shield wall, as I generally tend to do. I, I have used formations in the past, I know someone actually did mention that I should use more formations and everything, and yeah, I, I totally agree, but most of the time, I don't really need to do that, because I have something else that I have in mind, like I want to do damage myself, or I want to... Um, you know, I want to completely stomp them. You know, generally, uh, it, it really depends on a number of factors here. Please don't die. Run, run, run. Oh, I have enough athletics to maybe run away a little bit now. That's pretty cool. Oh, that was actually fantastic. Okay, come on now. Let's use this sword to, to its best effect. Ah. Oh, I took so much damage. Wow. Okay, and I got... <laughs> Well, that's hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. Did you see that? I literally got hit in the face with a javelin. That has to be one of... You know, that's just karma. It's just karma for attacking Karath, isn't it? That's the reason. Ah, oh well. I fully expected to have some kind of issue there because I was obviously charging in there in just any old how. But anyway, we're just going to let him go once again. Look at that. Eight skill points. Just, I, I can't get enough of the 8,000 experience that we're getting from these little battles here and there. And we also gained a good amount of renown as well, which I very much appreciate. So now that we have 75 in charm, we can actually get some more stuff. So let's see. 20% chance to avoid persuasion critical failure or 10% 
better chance for double persuasion success. Now, I have tried to take forgivable grievances in the past, and I personally feel like it is not worth it. I think meaningful favors is much better, so I will be taking that this time around. And then we also have 50 in tactics too, which is also nice. So let's see what we're going to go for here. Troops deal 5% more damage in simulations in open ground like plains, steppes, and desert terrains. That's what I'll be taking, but the other one is 10% more damage in simulations in snow and forest terrain. So if you are Sturgeon or Batanian, then this is probably what you'd want to take. But for me specifically, I will be taking the first one. There we go. All right, so otherwise I have a pretty desperate need for a focus point and I am almost leveled up to level 15. So we need a focus point to place it in charm. We still do have a little bit of a learning rate thanks to our social attribute, but otherwise it's going to need to get a little bit of a bump up. So we definitely need those focus points. Aha, we are declaring war against the Southern Empire. This is actually quite interesting to me. Not entirely sure why we would want to do that. Well, I suppose because we have so much overwhelming strength at the moment. Okay, well, I'm going to spend, um, what was it, 40? 40, 40 influence to gain 8,000 charm. Once again, we're gaining huge amounts of charm skill, and it is definitely worth spending some, um, some, uh, well, some points in that. And we've actually just leveled up. So there you go. There's another little point going in there. Now, what do we want to do here? I want to just make a brief overview of all these things just to see what the learning rates are. Okay, so learning rate of riding skill might have to be improved as well. So I pr probably will need to do something about that. We probably need to do a little bit of something about scouting too because as you can see, that's almost, almost being a little bit reduced by the fact that the focus points are now being outgrown and steward skills also having some issues as you can see ah, very difficult it's very very difficult to actually um, spend points in things so I'm gonna be spending it in endurance for the moment because I have three skills that I want to level up in that particular tree rather than just the one or two in social and the same thing with cunning as well. I only have one or two in that. I have all three in intelligence, but engineering is kind of useless right now because as far as I'm aware, it's still not implemented fully in the current version that I'm playing. So there's also that. Anyway, we're now at war against the Southern Empire. So we're going to be doing damage against them in just a second as well. And now we have 10, actually not 10, 100 actually in scouting. And let's see what we want to go for here. 20% less penalty from overburdened or a 2.5% bonus speed when party morale is higher than 75. I will be taking forced march. That is much better in my opinion. We're not really ever going to be overburdened in my opinion. I never think that we're going to have that much loot. I think that generally if you plan, you know, reasonably well enough, then you really don't have to worry about being overburdened at all. There's actually a deserter quest that I'd like to take in just a second, but I am still pretty badly injured. So that's the reason why I'm not really taking it just yet. And I'd like to recruit a couple of extra units before we even go ahead and do that. So otherwise, going to be just buying a bunch of stuff here. We're just going to be buying a bunch of horses because, again, I would like to move around as fast as we possibly can. Let's just actually go over here and recruit some troops. And I'm going to try and see if I can maybe get a task to eliminate that bandit hideout. Or I might just go in there myself, to be honest. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can get experience. Oh, there's a bandit base. Fantastic. Look at that. But yeah, there are so many different ways you can get experience and get cash and so on. Especially with the new, the new uh, faction being included. Because it seems like this area, I personally feel like they've done a great job. The modding team that worked on this, if it is indeed a team, I have no idea whether it's made by just one person or a couple of people, but whatever the case, whoever created this entire area has done a fantastic job because they understand that the early game really does have a significant impact on how much enjoyment a particular person is going to have playing in the territory because let's just say that you have um you have a, a new um, a new faction that you want to introduce and you're thinking to yourself okay so what can i do well i'm gonna add some towns gonna add some villages and then what else do i add and then some some mods they tend to get that a little bit wrong sometimes and either they'll go overboard and they'll make it so that the 
bandit parties are so incredibly strong and so incredibly numerous that you literally just get beaten down, beaten down, beaten down all the time. And then that obviously kills any kind of motivation that you would have to play in that particular campaign. And then on the other hand, uh, some some people might decide not to include any bandits whatsoever in their starting zone. And as a result, you have no one to kill. So you've got to run really far away from your territory. So let's say that there were no bandits in this area. I would have to walk all the way over here and maybe even further afield, maybe over into Azurai territory, maybe fight some desert desert bandits or something like that. Maybe fight some desert, um, or should we say step horses, uh, step horse bandits over here. But even so, those are both pretty high tier, if you know what I mean. Those bandit types are quite powerful because they're on they're on horses, of course. So it does make a pretty significant difference to the amount of enjoyment. And they understand that. It seems to me like they definitely understand how to balance the starting area. Because these Tessigen Vagrants, they're quite strong, but they're not on horses. They're, they're strong stat-wise, that is. They don't have shields, which obviously is fantastic because that means that you're otherwise going to be fighting a huge amount of well let's just say sea raiders you know you're probably going to be fighting a huge amount of sea raiders and let's face it you probably don't want to fight sea raiders when you've just started playing the game right so yeah otherwise yeah so they understand that that is indeed how a uh, you know initial starting area should be and i think that that's very very cool because having these bandit bases pop up, having the quests, a numerous amount of different tasks to do is also extremely fun. And I like it a lot. I think they've done a great job. Because I have no other mods that do anything in regards to um, spawning units or uh, anything like that. Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to die again, aren't I? Yes, I probably will end up dying. Oh, I hit him in the head. Can you believe that? Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, he died just before my bolt hit him. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, I'm going to hang back a little bit here, obviously, as you can no doubt tell, because I uh, don't really want to die, if at all possible. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, as far as I am aware, the tweak in Bannerlord tweaks that I have enabled right now is that if the player character dies in a bandit hideout attack that is an immediate game over. In other words, you fail. And that's happened before in uh, one of the previous episodes where I went into one of these bandit hideouts and I thought to myself, yes, I should be able to do fine here. And then I got murdered in the first five seconds. So <laughs> that is obviously something quite cool because that means that even if your units are really good, like my guys are right now, they seem pretty nice. They seem to be absolutely fine by themselves and don't really need my assistance whatsoever. But yeah. Even if your guys are good, then you yourself do have to survive. Ooh, this guy looks... Oh, Okay, you know what? I'm not going to take the duel this time around because I have low HP. I get hit once or twice and I'm basically dead. So I'm going to say I don't fight that because I uh, really do not want to die. Oh, look, look at it. He's going after me. Did you see that? He was, he was, he was very prepared. He was ex extremely prepared to do battle right there. And he was happy to charge through the entirety of my units as well, which was significantly uh, pretty scary, actually. Pretty scary. Anyway, we did gain 7.7 .7 renown and 6.8 influence, and we also gain a bunch of other things here. I don't think I have any space. Oh, I do have a, a little bit of space, actually, so we might as well take a couple of these units. They can also end up joining me a little as well, which is always nice. And, and, oh wow, look at this. This is pretty cool. Alright, so I think I'm probably going to be uh, replacing this sword, because you can see here it's got 39 cutting damage. And as a one-handed, as you can see, it has 29 cutting damage, which in my opinion is pretty awful. This katana, on the other hand, that is looking quite a bit better, but it is indeed, again, two-handed, once again. So... When it's two-handed, it gains about 10 damage. So if you, you know, minus the, the 10 from that, so it has 39 cutting damage. But this, in my opinion, this long saber is just so much better. It seems to be just over, uh, over abundantly 
clear which one is the preferred choice. So that, that's kind of disappointing to me, to be honest, because I actually really wanted to play with a katana because I think that that's very much in, in keeping with the theme. But if it's going to be so incredibly bad that I don't really do that much damage to anyone, then it doesn't really make much sense in my opinion. But, well, maybe we'll go back to it. I don't know. I need to do a little bit more testing in that regard for me to make a final judgment on it. But right now, it feels to me like... I mean, you saw at the end there, I actually took a swing at one of those, one of those enemies... And I did like, what was it now, 20-something damage? And then I finished him off with like 8 damage because I didn't get a very good hit on him at that point. But it just seems very... Uh, I don't know. It just seems very weak. And it's not satisfying. And uh, that's kind of what I would like to have out of my uh, out of my weapons. You know, I want to I wanna feel the hit. <laughs> if you'll excuse the... <laughs> if you'll excuse the reference. Because obviously that's the... Um, combat uh, combat mod that I'm using which makes it so that your slashes and bashes and so on do not completely pass through the enemy and so you're not having a, a, a sort of like flighty experience in combat and you're feeling the hit much more when you connect with an attack that's the the main thing that I wanted to try and accomplish with it. And it is doing it very, very well, in my opinion. Okay, oh, look at this. These are some nice arrows. These are much better than what he's using. So I will be giving him the new ones. And we'll just sell the remaining stuff. And we can also sell the other gear here as well. I don't think anyone needs anything, but I'm going to take a brief look. Oh, th oh he, he certainly needs some... Uh, <laughs> oh, he certainly needs some gloves. Yes, he definitely did. Okay, does he have a good helmet? It's a decent helmet, but it's not exactly great. So I'll just give him a, a slight upgrade. And what about this guy? It, does he need anything? Well, yes, he needs some new gloves, even though they're not a particularly great upgrade. They're going to do all right for him. And otherwise, I think that is indeed fine. So we're just going to sell the rest for 14000 That's That's kind of insane in itself. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to... Well, we have... Uh, an abundance of opponents, don't we? Yes, we have a huge amount of different people that we could potentially fight. And I'm going to be just leveling up a couple of our people and then walking into enemy territory and demanding that they fight us. All right, so I just leveled up again thanks to our steward skill absolutely chunking our experience gain. And I, by chunking, I mean actually being extremely lucrative for us. It's giving us about 8,000 experience every single time it ticks over, which I assume is when our troops eat their food every single day. And as a result, I've been able to get to level 16 without any problems whatsoever. I spent a focus point in steward just now and another attribute point in intelligence. And I also had steward level up. And I, as you can see, I actually took the sweatshop skill because that does improve your workshops by 20% and also makes your siege engines build 20% faster, which in my opinion is much better than stiff upper lip, which only gives you reduced food consumption while in an army. At least, in my opinion, that is the only thing that really has any bearing on you as a vassal who does not become a governor or anything like that. So we're actually in Azerai territory right now. I'd like to try and find an opponent relatively soon. And you can see here that, oh, hello there. Yes, not you. <laughs> uh, yes, I say, oh, yes, I'd like to find, a, uh, you know, I'd like to find a, an opponent of some kind. And then uh, out of nowhere comes one of the biggest armies we've seen from the Azerai so far. But we're going to be fighting this guy nevertheless. He's only got 38, which I personally do not really appreciate because I'd like to have a slightly larger battle because it's going to give us a good amount of renown, influence, and obviously experience as well. And it's just going to make things much, much easier for us in the long run. Oh, nice damage. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to kill him. And instead, I... Oh, he got murdered. Did you see that? Whoa. Okay, that was... Uh, <laughs> that, was actually, that was actually kind of brutal. That was pretty brutal. All right, so we're going to go for shield wall right here. And loose... And we'll just tell the cavalry to charge, because it seems like most of the enemy, now that their leader has been murdered, 
they're not really wanting to do much. They're not really wanting to do much with us. So I'm just going to run them down as best I can. Obviously, I don't have a shield, so me trying to block there was completely useless. But does it matter to me? Not really, because I'm still, still going to continue to run them down as much as I possibly can. Gain some good polar... Really? <laughs> okay, that was kind of weird. Anyway, gain some good polearm skill, or at least I will try to, as much as I possibly can. Oh, he's dead. And uh, this guy... Oh! <laughs> really? Really? He was able to... Okay. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Okay, so, for those of you that have been around a little bit of time... At least for those of you that have seen the Duelist series, which was the previous series before this one, uh, you might remember that I actually had a mace weapon on that character. And I personally loved using the mace, and I, I, I've always said that it's a fantastic close quarters combat weapon. It's super fast, it has a high amount of armor penetration and everything, and it's just really, really good. But... The one weakness that these maces have is that the reach is really low, alright? Now, here's the thing. This guy, some random, I have no idea who it was that actually took me down, but this guy was able to kill a cavalry unit at the exact moment when they entered melee range with a head. Wasn't that on the head? Let me actually just have a look. Yes, indeed. He got me on the head. How did he do that? That is some supernatural stuff right there. I have no idea. Wow, that is actually kind of impressive. Anyway, with that amazing demise on our hands, I was actually able to <laughs> level up our clan. And we are now clan tier 3, which... Would have been a, uh, well, rather joy a joyous occasion, I suppose you could say. But, um, yes, uh, this mace, this is the mace, I believe, that actually killed me. It's got a pretty decent length, but that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Uh, should, I, should I use it? Should I use it for close quarters combat? And then just use the, the pole arm and the crossbow for everything else? I think that seems pretty good, even though it's not really... <laughs> That's the thing. It's not thematic at all, which I'm... I'm not... I'm having a bit of a struggle about that, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. It just kind of gave me the, um, the feeling that maces are so fun to use, but... You know what? I'm, I'm probably going to go back to, to swords again, but um, I'm going to just play with the mace for like a little bit and then see how it goes, but generally, yeah. That was... Extremely impressive, let's just say that. I'll give him props for that. <laughs> uh, that was crazy good. For him, that is. Not for me, obviously. Okay, so where's the, where did that army go, by the way? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's still there then. <laughs> uh, that was crazy. Alright, okay, so ah, Hanzo is creating an army. Alright, well, that's very good for him. But obviously he's uh, seemingly quite far away from us right now. Ooh, what? Oh, a tier 6 clan just left. Wow. Oh, they, oh, she's an enemy with Hanzo. Okay, that's probably the reason why she left then. That's actually really interesting. Okay, that is actually kind of harsh because she's left for our direct opponents in the Azurai. Wow, I would not have expected that. All right, so we're going to actually head in here versus this guy. Oh, I'm at 19%. All right, we'll just go for an auto-resolve then just to get the experience gain. That's good enough, I guess. I mean, the experience gain is very, very useful, so that's the main reason why I would like to do that. I mean, look at this. All these guys leveling up super, super fast because, again, auto-resolving is always going to be much, much faster for leveling units up. So that's generally why I will always auto-resolve against bandits in my off-screen time, because there's no point in me actually going in, unless I actually want to get some kills and get some experience myself. Oh dear. Bunch of our clans are leaving. 
Alright, so we've entered another battle, even though we've just received super bad news that most of our clans are ending up leaving the faction. And I have no idea why this is happening. I can only assume that it's because Hanzo is deciding not to give many of the thieves that they've gained from the Azurai to these vassals. And he's not being fair about what he decides to do with them. So that is a bit of a problem, because now... Now we're going to be fighting against actually pretty powerful clans. Because these, these clans are mostly, I think, tier 6, tier 5. And that's going to be very problematic for us. So I don't know how that's going to go. But I can only hope that it's going to go okay. Because, let's face it, we, uh, we're not exactly the most powerful right now. I could, be, I could be a little bit better. Let's face it. I could be a little... Oh, be careful. He's got a he's got a big two-handed axe. I don't really want to rush in there because that's going to get me murdered, isn't it? All right, I'm going to get out my crossbow here and hit nothing. Yes, very good. Yeah, come on, get him. Ah, oh, did I did I really not hit from there? Okay, apparently I am just cursed. I mean, obviously we are moving, so it is of course not going to be as accurate as if we would stand still, but I, I thought that maybe I'd at least hit something. At least if all of the, uh, the the entirety of the crosshair was all in that one position, but apparently not. Anyway, we're almost at 75 polearm skill, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get there in this battle, unfortunately. Oh, maybe I will. I might be able to, j just ge generally bear in mind that these kinds of situations are for leveling your skills. So it's generally a good idea to try and maximize it as much as possible by making as many effective attacks as you can. So don't take what I'm doing as an example. Because <laughs> I'm missing every single thing in the world right here. Like that, for example. That was that was fantastic. I'm just going to tab out in rage right now. There we go. All right, so it's 19 renown and a little bit of influence right there. Even these smaller parties are going to be worth attacking. We're going to let him go. Even if he doesn't give us a huge amount of charm skill, just gaining a small amount is always going to be preferable over gaining some random amount of money because generally they're going to give me... Probably about 3,000 gold, and that's pretty much it. Now, this is a much better armor piece, but it is not thematic in the least. So I will probably not be using that. As you can see, it's it's a southern robe, which, in, in other words, it means it's a a, uh, a piece of Azurai equipment. So obviously we won't be doing that. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this episode, but I think we're going to be having some issues. Yeah, as you can see, look at that. That is actually hilarious. Do you see what has actually just happened? <laughs> uh, they took all of this. Right? The uh, Tetsujin took all of these thieves. They took Habya, they took Razik, they took, uh, I think, Kasira as well. And now all of those are gone because Hanzo gave those thieves to the defectors. And now the defectors are with the Azurai. So... That's kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, it's going to be very intriguing about what happens next. I am going to be uh, very much anticipating fighting some of these guys as well. There, there's no doubt going to be <laughs> an opportunity to do that. I am dreading it and also excited about it at the same time. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.